Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you. And before I get too far gone, I think we should also give a nice, hearty welcome and thank you to our guest instru instrumental instrumentalist that we have with us on today. We're glad to have you guys. We are. My friends, our second text, our sermonic text for today comes from the book of Acts. Acts chapter 10, beginning at verse 34. But of course, before we read, Bible check, Bible check, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. We encourage you to bring your Bibles when you come to the house of the Lord, especially in these types of corporate settings. All right, Acts chapter 10, beginning at verse 34. Please, my friends, listen and read along. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts men from every nation who fear him and do what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, telling the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. We, we are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Amen. Amen. Friends, this is the word of God. Thank you, God. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you today for your blessings and all that you have done and for this opportunity. So right now, make me less. Allow me to decrease so that you can increase and become more. And fix us by clearing our minds, opening our hearts, and unstopping our ears so we can hear from you. And upon hearing from you, we want to leave this place better than the way we arrived. Yes, Lord, we want to walk out of here better than the way we walked in. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you would please, my friends, turn to a neighbor, look at them good, and repeat after me, friend. friend. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. And today's sermon is, today's sermon is. It's still good for all peoples. Amen. It's only right, isn't it? That the one who died for all deserves to have his gospel shared with all. Now, Peter didn't always believe this. No, up to recently, actually, in our text, Peter did not always see it this way. You see, here in this particular passage, Peter is in Cornelius' home. Cornelius was a ranked Italian soldier in Caesarea. Now, Cornelius, as the Bible describes him, was a God-fearer, but he was not a Jew. Not as Peter was, not as Jesus was. So Peter would have believed that Cornelius was unworthy of the gospel. He should not receive the gift of salvation. But thanks to a vision from God, where Peter was basically told not to see anyone as unworthy or, as the text would indicate, unclean. Peter is now sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with Cornelius. Now, why would he do this? Well, 
Because the one who died for all deserved to have his gospel shared with all. But we don't always feel this way. Oh, hello somebody. We don't always feel like we should share Jesus with everyone. That we should share Jesus at all. Naturally, we don't say this overtly. We don't do it overtly. Uh, let's put it this way. We may not actually acknowledge that we hoard the gospel. Did you ever see that show? Hoarders? <laughs> Anybody ever watch that show, Hoarders? I mean, you can find it, I'm sure, somewhere now. It's, it's not on anymore, but I'm sure you can find it if you want to take a look at it. But the show, it, it, they followed people who had issues hoarding. That's what they did. And these individuals lived in messes, but mainly because they could not get rid of anything. Everything that they had collected or just acquired, some during the course of their lives, had some meaning, some sentimental value, and they could not get rid of it or they would not get rid of it. I remember one episode where there was a lady, she had paper towel rolls everywhere. And each roll meant something to her. So she kept them. Now, my friends, this is not exactly the same sentiment employed when we hoard the gospel. You see, in this case, we grip our comfortable understanding of the gospel for if we share it, if we share it, we feel or we believe that our comfortable understanding of the gospel will then be challenged. If we share it, then it can be argued against. If we share it, then it might change. And if it changes, then what does that have to say about me? Does that mean I'm going to have to change too? You see, this has been Peter's initial challenge with this entire chapter, with this entire passage. Now, mind you, he's come a long ways. This is not the same Peter we met early on in the Gospels. He's come a long ways. He's, at first, he was a fisher of fish. Then he became a fisher of folks. Then he got upset and went back to becoming a fisher of fish. And then met the resurrected Lord and became a fisher of folks. This is not the same Peter. He's come a long ways. First, he was impetuous to the point of saying the wrong stuff almost all of the time. And then he becomes the one who preaches the gospel and 3,000 folks join the church. This is not the same Peter. He's come a long ways from attempting to rebuke Jesus to denying to have ever known Jesus to healing folks in Jesus' name. And now... My friends, he's having to change again to include Gentiles as recipients of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because now he sees and he knows that Jesus died for all. I got three amens. Let's try this one. He knows and he sees that Jesus not only died for all, but rose for all. Amen. A lot better, y'all. All right. You see, at some point, somewhere in this, we struggle. You see, we hear and we even say that Jesus is for all, but deep down inside, what we really mean is Jesus is for all the folks who are like me. 
deep down inside what we really believe is that Jesus is for all who see the world the way I see the world. And I've been there too. I've been there as well. But let me tell you what I've learned. Jesus does not agree with this at all. Jesus does not agree with this. Jesus is not going to cooperate with this kind of thinking. Because all for Jesus does not mean the same as all does for us. You see, all for us usually means all who are like me. But all for Jesus means all. All. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> Air one. This is what all means for our Lord and Savior. And why are all included? Peter tells us why in this particular text. Because Jesus is Lord of all. By the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus went around doing good for all. And healing all who were under the devil's power. After his resurrection from the dead, he was seen by some, but all who did see him were commanded to preach the truth to all with the hopes that all will believe because all need forgiveness from sins through his name. Hello, somebody. All of us uh -huh, have sinned and come short of the Lord's glory. All of us. And for this reason we all need to be forgiven by the power and through the name of Jesus the Christ. You see what Jesus did for you and what Jesus did for me. This sacrifice was too great for the Lord's will to bend to what we want. Jesus died to redeem the world. You understand that? That means you, that means me, that means all the folks you don't like. They're included in this. Oh, hello somebody. Everybody you unfriended last year is included in this. To redeem the world. The promise of his resurrection is too great for the Lord's will to be compromised by what we want and by what we think. So the Lord continues to send Simon Peters to the homes of Cornelius's so that the world will continue to learn that this glorious gospel of Jesus is still good for all peoples. It's still good, y'all, for everyone. If you don't mind, I want you to break your church etiquette. I know we've been taught when we come into the house of God that we sit still and we look ahead and we never turn. I want you to break that church etiquette today and look around in the room. Look at everybody who's in there. Look at all the folks that are here. Look at all the people who are represented here today. Now you don't know everybody's backstory. I don't either. And don't need to know everybody's backstory. But let me tell you what you do know. Jesus died for everyone here and everyone not here. Let me tell you what you do know. Jesus rose for everyone here and everyone not here. And folks, that's the gospel. That's the gospel. And this gospel this message of Jesus Christ is still good. Just like it was good for your mama and your grandmama, it's still good. Like it was good for your first preacher and will be good for your last preacher, it is still good and it is intended to be good for everyone. You all be blessed this Easter Sunday in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.